What's going on, guys? So, <clears throat> we have a Tuesday chest day ahead of us, baby. My back right now is absolutely thrashed. Those uh, 180s, they did a number on me, but man, felt felt good, felt clean, felt smooth, and there's nothing wrong with that. And you know damn well we're going to do it next week, except we're going to do more reps. We got seven yesterday, we'll do eight next week, 100%. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I have Pop-Tart in my throat. Aside that, man, it is a beautiful day here on Long Island. Now, whew, man, so far so good. Can't complain about a damn thing. I had a client cancel this morning, so I got to sleep in a little bit. Freaking win-win there. Got a couple extra meals of me before we go to the gym. <clears throat> so we're heading there now, obviously. It's kind of how we do things. I'm sure you knew that. Aside that, man, we are slammed tomorrow. We're heading to Jersey, actually. But, uh... Nope. Ah, I can't get over the weather. I was walking inside with a pup earlier, running around in the backyard. He was having a... He was having a little field day. He was having a blast. So let's talk about what <clears throat> is on the menu for today's chest day. Everything feels good. Maybe a smidge tight, but we'll uh, we'll cross the bridge when we come to it. But everything feels good, feels limber, feels strong, feels dense. We see our body improving, just growing and growing now, which is nice. You know, we're above that above that hurdle from when we were injured, and then when we were sick, and then when we were <laughs> almost going to the hospital for my shoulder. So all that's behind us now, man. Everything's going well. You can hear, and I excuse me for this, <clears throat> my allergies are starting to kick in a little bit, and my body uh, hasn't started fighting them off properly yet. It's still wondering what the hell is going on, and what are these things. So, it's fighting them off right now. Got an internal war going on, man. Me versus the allergens, and the allergens are going to lose. They lose every year, except one time last year where I, I yielded to them, because it was... <laughs> Before my surgery, it was, uh, I was supposed to go to, <clears throat> my girl's family does like a, because you need some backstory for it, they do like a guys only, like a men's, like a men's dinner and hang out, things like that, so like the father, the uncles, you know, the boyfriend, whatever, and I was supposed to go to it, and I... <laughs> I woke up, my entire face was just blown up. You couldn't understand me. I couldn't breathe at all. So I called her. I'm like, there is no way I'm coming over. I sent her a picture. She's like, oh my God. So we, uh, we're going to be good for that this year, obviously, because the surgery helped out tremendously. You know, every allergy season, I'm going to be thankful for getting that thing done because I know how bad it is when it wasn't done, you know. Forget about sleepless nights. There were, there were no sleeping nights, period. It was always, <laughs> I could never sleep at night. But the funniest thing that I experienced from actually getting that done was when I have, like, a mild cold or, like, a little cold or something, since I got that surgery... <clears throat> I'm completely unaware that I'm sick every time because I'm like mildly congested and it could be like severe congestion but I still breathe so much better with severe congestion than I ever did on like a random Tuesday when I'm feeling good so <laughs> I'll miss all the early warning signs of being sick and just you know be like oh, I can't breathe today because that was just such a normal thing my entire life like oh I can't breathe today that's all right it's not an air day. <laughs> so it's a funny, uh, it's a funny disconnect I have there that I'm gonna have to learn to remember, I guess. Where when my breathing starts to go a little bit, I gotta be like, hey, John, remember, you're supposed to breathe now. You know, your air is supposed to work. Your nose works nowadays, remember? It's been, it's been 10 years, John. Wake up. But anyway, before I went, rambling on there, let's talk about the uh, chest day today, right? Whew, excuse me. 
be gone. It's not like I'm talking to my dog, I'm talking to myself. But <clears throat> we're gonna start off nice and simple. Dumbbell presses, flat. Plain, you know, standard startup protocol. From there, decline hammer presses. And we're gonna play with that uh, that single arm plate loaded red piece that I've been using lately. That thing has been smooth as butter. Feeling great on my pecs, feeling great on everything, and I really, I'm enjoying it a lot. Go right from there, dumbbell flies, pecs presses, those lower pec fly things that I still haven't really made a name for, that I've got to make a name for. And I'm sure there is a name for it out there, but if you ever stole my, my, like, logbook, you wouldn't even know what I do. Because half the names are just what it looks like, and... <laughs> <laughs> something funny I do in there is uh, if I add a new exercise that has like a handle to it, right? And I don't know the name of the handle. Like I might, I'll just doodle a little picture of it. <laughs> so I'll doodle, there'll be little doodles in my book once in a while of like, this is the handle I use. You know, like I know an easy curl bar, I know a V grip, a close grip, all that stuff. Lat pull down bar, but some of the funky ones, and those funky ones are great sometimes. But I won't know the name of it because... Excuse me, it's just some weird, obscure name. Like, oh, this is the the Blue T7040, you know, dick press. And I'm like, well, Blue T740 D dick press, I don't know what you do or why you're named this way. Doesn't make sense to me. A tricep rope makes sense to me because it's for the triceps and it's a rope, you know, a close grip makes sense to me because it's for a close grip row <clears throat> v-bar guess what shaped like a v easy curl bar because it's easier to curl it right easy curl bar makes sense to me but these wacky names man i just send them doodling i'm just like i'm not i'm like i sometimes i don't even know what to call it i'm like fuck it i just draw a little picture and you know when i go to the gym for the most part i know exactly what i'm doing but and I'm just looking at it for reference for like weights and reps. Oh my god. Fucking hey. Yeah, my airways haven't caught up to the allergies yet, so it's just trying to force oxygen into me. And that was partly why my eye was bothering me so much yesterday. That just kept irritating it, which didn't help. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, my book's full of little doodles. And I'm excited. I've just been, you know, smashing the workouts per usual. Growing. We have to be in Miami. Uh, early next month. That sounds right. Early next month we have to be in Miami. And I have, jokingly, but I have an event at the end of April that I need, for my own selfish ego, I need to be jacked up for. So we're going to take all the protocol necessary. Leading up, we're going to give my body some more time to rest, first of all. You know, you know, staying clean, doing doing all that stuff, but I plan to, rather not need, I plan to <clears throat> be back up to about 250 by the end of April. I have a plan how to get there. I think it's going to go well. I'll know more about that plan tomorrow. i got to figure out a couple of little details with it. But man, it, uh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. We're going to get jacked. <sighs> like a kid telling a nursery rhyme, just falling asleep over here. We're going to get jacked, tan, go to that event, scare some motherfuckers. Not, it's not a competition or anything. It kind is. But, uh... You know, on that note, guys, we're going to start... Thinking about putting this pre-workout down. I've had, like, some weird chest pains lately. Nothing serious, just... I'm like, that was uncomfortable. Nothing strict painful or anything like that. And I think it's because I've been using... Far too much caffeine. So... My pre-workout I usually use, and I always use like half a scoop of it, but lately I've been doing 400, like the full, the full scoop, which is 400 milligrams, like 5 milligrams of beta-alanine, just very heavily dosed. 
I've just been putting the whole thing in there out of, I don't know why. It's been a while. Like a wild, wild months. So I tapered, I put my regular uh, pumping agent in there. Full scoop of the pumping agent, no stim. That's normal, that's not going to hurt anything. But I only put a quarter scoop of the stim. I, it's ironic because I'm, I'm yawning my head off right now. But, uh... <sighs> I want to see if that helps out a little bit. Because it would make sense. You know, I'm under so much stress in my daily life sometimes that it, uh, I'm tearing from that yawn. I'm like a, like a vegan in a butcher shop, just being a pussy. Let me get this down, and I'll, I'll talk to you about it. Cheers. Ooh. Gotta say, you made the taste a lot better. <laughs> no too strict, strong flavors combating in my fucking mouth. But, uh, <laughs> oh my god, that was a lot better. So, yeah, no, I was feeling a little, a little something in here. Nothing I was concerned about, my blood pressure is the same. Just, I'm not sure if it's tightness in my pecs. <clears throat> or training my back so hard that I'm feeling it through a little bit, which is, a, a, believe it or not, a very real thing. They used to have me all the time. I don't know. But we're gonna, you know... 400 milligrams in one hit is a, uh... It's a heavy dose. It's a heavy dose and it's obviously not good for you. So that's... For me, at least... Makes the most sense to nip that in the bud first. So... <clears throat> and tell you the truth, you know... I eat plenty. I make sure that I get my sleep you know, the best I can, but it's, it's, I make a hard effort to make sure I get my sleep in, you know, I'll, I'll move things around so I can sleep, <clears throat> so it's never really stim-wise for me necessary in the gym, you know, when I was in Spain training with Dorian Yates for a week, my only pre-workout, because everything, there's nothing's over there is like legal, you know, most of the products that are over here in the U.S., nothing over there is legal, because they just have so many restrictions and guidelines and it's a pain in the ass to make a supplement company out of there. Because you have to go through their FDA and so on and so forth. Make sure everything's healthy and not, you know, messed with. That my pre-workout before training with six-time Mr. Olympia Dorian Yates for a week straight was a double espresso that they sold at the gym. And that was it. I would sit outside the gym. It was beautiful out. It was like nice fall days like 60-something degrees, <clears throat> sip on a double espresso, and then see Dorian just walking down the stairs. And after that, we would just get after it, plain and simple. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's funny, man. It's funny how psychosomatic that stuff is, how psychosomatic pre-workouts are. Like I've always said, when you're over-stimming your pre-workouts, it's actually detrimental to your workout. Because what happens is, caffeine is a vasoconstrictor, so it constricts the blood vessels, right? <clears throat> now, you're trying to get a better pump, so you need your blood vessels wide open. So, it to counter that in a way, they add a vasodilator. But now you're having like a four loco effect on your arteries, where the con there's things telling it to contract, and there's con things telling it to expand. Whenever your body gets call it a message, to expand and contract, expand and contract, it kind of has the same problematic effects as Four Loco used to have. If you ever had Four Loco growing up when we were, you know, if you're around my age and we were, I guess, 13 years old, drinking and stuff, you know, being degenerates, <clears throat> that stuff, it was giving kids, you know, heart attacks sometimes, because it really was a is an upper and a downer. You know, it was a ton of caffeine and it was a ton of alcohol. So it was really, really bad news. So when it comes to that pre-workout, you know, you're telling your body go up and down and left and right. It's not good for it. But when you're constricting the blood vessels that much with that much stimulant, what really happens, man, and I'll finish with this in a moment and we'll go to the gym because obviously we just parked. <clears throat> but man, what really happens with that 
is your workout is worse because you can't get blood flow where you're supposed to get it as efficiently. And because your arteries are, you know, they were like this and now they're constricted a little bit. With constricted blood vessels, constricted arteries, you're getting less oxygen to the muscle so that you're taking a longer time to recover after every set. You're getting less blood into the muscle, which is giving you less of a pump, even though they claim pump and you'll get a pump from it, but not what you should be because the caffeine is hindering it. The stimulants are hindering it. You know, and that's a really big factor for a lot of these pre-workouts. Meanwhile, people don't understand this. You grow from the pump too. You grow from heavy weight, ripping and tearing and letting your body recover from it. But your body also grows from the pump. So in our body, we have fast twitch fibers. We have slow twitch fibers. You know, if you ever cut up a, uh, a chicken, right, there's white meat and there's dark meat. Humans have white meat and dark meat. White meat is fast twitch Swiss, bleh, fast twitch fibers. Dark meat is slow twitch fibers. Now, <clears throat> most of our muscle, whenever you get a pump, right, our pump stimulates our pink tissue, our pink fossa tissue, which is the dark meat. It allows it to expand and contract, and it's kind of like overstretching a rubber band, where eventually when you keep stretching it, it's just going to, st if you stretch it out to here every day, right, it'll, it'll stop maybe back here, instead of going back to the normal size. So, allowing it to stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch consistently over time, it allows that pink fossa tissue to develop instead of just the white, that, you know, heavy, intense, fast twitch muscle fibers. And bodybuilders need both, man. Those pink tissues, too, you know, fast twitch fibers make you look dense, but those pink tissues are the ones that make you look round. So they really work well together. And on that note, this pre-workout, it's really not going to kick in. There's nothing to kick in because, you know, I, I took maybe two cups of coffee worth of caffeine in it. So nothing to really kick in. The, uh, you know, body's going to utilize the vasoconstrict vasodilators that I took. And on that note, my friends, I'll see you inside. Let's get it, baby. So... <clears throat> We're just up to a very simple, appropriate reception set right now. <sighs> Dumbbell presses are done. The overall pec was hit. Now we're going to have to isolate that lower part right here. Like I always say, when you're using the decline press, right, people think just up here is their pec, but the upper pec shelf is actually the smallest part. When you put your hand behind your back, right, where that collarbone comes straight down, so it's meat over here, that hanging meat. That's what you get out of training the lower pec. That's what gives you that light scooping on our chest so this isn't very heavy this is the probe set we'll do 10 reps because my probe set for chest right now since i'm still you know nursing a tight chest and so on and so forth it's a little more than i would normally do probe wise but uh see how this feels we need a pr on the dumbbell press so i'll tell you about that later like i always say man you gotta buckle up for safety keep seeing the seat Good, good. Good. Nice, easy, felt great, felt clean. Got a little something up here, but I think it was the fluke rep because the ones after it felt fine. It didn't take a second. I'm going to put three plates on here. Whew. Make it effort. Once everything gets back to normal, we'll have four plates back on here. But we're uh, going to take this all right now, you know? But I'd rather not hinder the rest of my workout here and stop me from doing anything else. I had myself a uh, nice little rest. Okay. Pex still on the right, should be fine. Alright, once again, buckle up for safety. Alright, buckle up. Oh, good. Good.
We're feeling good tonight, man. Last week I failed at eight, so my right pack kind of just not gave out, but it was a little tight. I've been stretching, doing what I'm supposed to do for that uh, rehabilitation work. I mean, that 12 felt great. We're uh, going to go up next week for sure. Whew. I was just kind of keeping my mind in that left pack, but I think this on one of those reps in the last set, I just overstretched a little bit. Otherwise, that felt, that felt fucking great, baby. Oh, and that was the belt. Whew. Okay, so time for the probe set. We did one plate, 15 reps, warm up, super easy. Nice, smooth, controlled. We make sure we don't have some crazy uh, chit chatting in between this probe set and my next work set. But, uh, man, it's a good, it's a good fucking chest day, baby. It's a good chest day. So, I lose six of these, give or take. Like I said, this probe set, so more when I know what I had that feel. And from there, we're going up to actually get some work done, baby. How's it feel over here? A lot better. Move. 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 Yeah, that felt uh, lighter than I expected it to. So, we're going to take a minute. My other work set weight last week was two plates and a quarter. I'm thinking we try three today. This has been a good, strong day, and I want to keep that positive momentum going, you know? Even if it's a couple reps, just get our body used to feeling that weight, you know? Yeah, we'll do three. so much today. This will be PR for us. Three plates each side. It shouldn't, it's not really a big, big deal. The only thing that ever hindered me from doing this was my pec not feeling great. But it's feeling good today. So we'll, uh, you know, even when I hit failure the other week with two plates and a quarter, it was just because my pec, pec felt a little weird. But anything's feeling good today? Fucking knock on wood, assuming it stays that way. It will stay that way. You don't go into a uh, set with uh, negative on time. Yeah. Negative mentality, man. Let's see what we got. Ooh. Don't distract me. pain coming down here from like my tricep into my elbow from my, my bicep when I feel it but uh that's always been a little bit tight so pull it a couple times that was more the pec starting to give out a little bit than anything else but that was a that was a great set like I said three plates is great nothing nothing spectacular to write home about but comparing to because everything was tight very tight last week of doing four reps of two and a quarter to three plates this week for what we do seven I think seven sounds right it's in my it's in the video I don't remember I gotta check for it write it down actually but that was that was a good set on the dumbbell flies baby whoa what's going on guys so we uh man we smashed it today awesome chest day we had a PR on the dumbbells, on the flat dumbbells. We had a dumbbell uh, PR on the decline. We had a PR on the freaking incline plate loaded piece. We had a PR on dumbbell. We had a PR on everything, pretty much everything. You know, always trying to improve at least one thing in that little book I carry around every single week. So, man, without further ado, I'm starting to get a little hungry. Let's take the pump cover off, see what we look like. And from there, Grab some food and go about our day, baby. Okay. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Ooh, almost.
just lost the hat that time. Oh, let me fix this. In case I gotta I look cool for a minute. That way I can see my body without a stupid hat on. Nice and round. Shoulders look nice and even, which is such a nice, <laughs> nice change of pace. Pecs are nice and pumped. <sighs> Upper chest, it's there, it's looking good. What's up, bro? Okay. Yeah, the camera. Legs look good. And on that note, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Whoa. Hey, guys. So, I just want to address the abrupt ending to the last video. A buddy of mine uh, from the gym walked in, and he's not really... He's, he doesn't like being on camera. So, the posing room is a public place, right? And... I'm in there recording videos. Now, like I always say, gym beats camera. If you're in the gym to work out, you have far more priority than me with my stupid camera. So, camera goes off, no problem. Uh, if he's in the frame there, I'm gonna blank him out. Well, I guess you'll, uh, you would have seen that by now, but I'm just talking to myself at this point. <clears throat> but, Besides that, man, that's that's all we had to say about that. Now, let's talk about today's workout, man, because this was the best chest day I've had in a long time. Holy shit, the sun is shining, the pecs are popping. Man, it's a beautiful day, and we killed it. So, dumbbell presses, PR. Decline hammer, PR. Incline single plate loaded machine thing, PR. Dumbbell flies, PR. All of those major heavy compounds, we took a step above today, and that's a, man, that's a damn beautiful feeling. Didn't feel like changing my shirt. I'm hungry. I just want to go home. I'll change it and shower when I get home. But, uh, let's talk about what those PRs actually meant, right? God, I hate seeing a stopped school bus, because I never, because we're train tracks, so I'm stopping for that. But I always feel like I'm going to get a ticket. Okay, anyway. So, uh, I've been thinking a lot about, uh, like, mental blocks lately, you know? <clears throat> Not so much for myself in life, but more so in the gym. Kind of like when I was doing those 70-pound laterals, right? Where I said to myself, I was at 65 for so, so long because 70 pounds for a lateral just seems ludicrous. Sure enough, picked up the weight, threw it up, it was fine. Now, with my pec injury, you know back in last March at this point, which is crazy, but you know, when you injure yourself as an athlete of my caliber, sometimes it takes a while to get better because we're continuing to use it, you know? I slowly increased the weight to what I was training. And once I hit the, like, you know, <clears throat> the weight I was able to work with for dumbbell presses, chest presses, anything. <clears throat> and don't get me wrong, it's been going really good. But the second I hit the triple digits with the dumbbells again for the presses, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Not in a way of, like, it hurts. In a way of being afraid again, I guess. And knowing that I'm approaching that weight that tore it in the first time. Meanwhile, you know, I'm above and beyond stronger than I was a year ago. But <clears throat> it's that mental thing, you know? So I tore it with 130s for six reps on a uh, an incline press, <clears throat> which I had done no problem up until that point. But 
but my friends. We were up to the 120s on the flat dumbbell presses. And I, was, I did eight reps last week as like a new rep, so the week prior I did seven. So last week was the first week we did eight of those. And I remember, and I wrote little notes in my book, I go, it felt great, it felt good. Good shit, you know? We killed it. But, 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 don't even think you get in front of me, lady. Jerk off. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> you know, I'm trying to train that to be a lot stronger. And that's kind of how I'm focusing that exercise in a way. Because I want it to be strong enough so I don't hurt it again. <clears throat> so instead of grabbing the 120s today and telling myself, you know, let me... Uh, let me do nine reps instead of eight, or let me do ten, you know, I'm like, let me grab the 125s, because five more pounds on a 120 pound dumbbell, this is my rationalization to myself, so it made me, or rather it helped me actually do it, I'm like, five more pounds on a 120 pound dumbbell is not a lot of weight, it's less than five percent, added on each side, so I'm like, you know what, let me grab it, and just slowly, incrementally bring that strength up. So last week, like I said, 120 pound dumbbells, eight reps. <clears throat> Today, grabbed the 125 pound dumbbells, another eight reps. So we matched last week's reps with heavier weight. And that's what, you know, that's what it's all about when it comes to incrementally getting stronger. This thing's on, right? Yeah, cool. <laughs> incrementally getting stronger. Now, <laughs> next week, we're going to stabilize those 125s, because that's a brand new weight for, and we haven't touched that in a long time, for just for that exercise, you know. So we'll stabilize the 125s, if they go up super light, we'll do 10 reps of them. <sighs> Excuse me. <clears throat> we'll do a good 10 reps, and from there, we'll uh, push everything else up that day. You know, the three plates on the incline press is a good one too. That was a great PR for me. It was funny, because the first time I used it three or four weeks ago, I think it was four weeks ago now, maybe, th I don't know, three or four, whatever, I finished off with two plates on there, and it felt like heavy, for like two reps, because my pec was tight, everything was tight, <clears throat> so we went home, started to work on the pec a little bit, stretching a little bit more, doing the modality things we should have been doing the whole time, you know, because you get lazy with stretching sometimes, and sure enough, today it paid off. You know, it was, I was pushing weight my body was capable of pushing without some other lagging injury forcing me to baby it a little bit. <clears throat> but I'll be honest with you guys, that's, it's about all I got for you right now. So I'm going to head home, get some food down, and I'll see you tomorrow.